known as the Jagaban. Some call him some other names, but he is the ex-governor of Lagos State and also the national leader of APC. But aside all of this, what is the issue surrounding Ashwa Jubola Metinubu? I'm going to quickly go through it here. And one of them is that Tinubu has positioned his own son to become Lagos State Governor come 2023. The Free Lagos Movement says Bola Ahmed Tinubu, national leader of the All Progressive Congress, APC, is positioning his son to become Governor of Lagos State come 2023. The group also accused Bola Ahmed Tinubu of placing his relatives in key positions in the state, noting that the APC leader and stunned Lagos to his own personal cottage. This was contained in, a, in an address delivered by Comrade Mark Adebayo at a World Press Conference addressed at the airport hotel Ikeja on Thursday. The group stressed that its demands were premised on ensuring a Lagos that is free from stunted economic growth occasioned by monumental corruption and social manipulation of the people. A free Lagos that will embrace in all its ramifications the tenets of good governance in public sector, transparency, accountability, fairness and ethnic cohesion. He said, today the reality on ground is that the center of excellence, the economic capital of Nigeria, had indeed, and indeed the fifth largest economy in Africa, has been held captive and brazenly been manipulated by a group of power cabals led by a former governor of Lagos State, Ashwa Jubola Metinubu, for their selfish interests rather than a public good. It is still baffling to the majority of Nigerians how Lagos State has ended up becoming a personal cottage industry of one individual who solely determines the fate and destiny of about 20 million people. For almost 20 years now, Lagos has become its fiefdom with trails of personal aggrandizement, staggering corruption, and virtual enslavement. The group went on to list how Bola Metinubu totally allegedly continued to entrench himself in the state by placing his people in key positions in the state, among other actions as follows. One, Ashwaju Bola Metinubu was governor for eight years, but has continued to govern by proxy till date. His wife has been senator for eight years and still going for the third term now. The incumbent commissioner for women affairs in Lagos State, Mrs. Lola Konde, a former member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, is Tinubu's sister-in-law. Four, Honorable Shukomi, the current member of Lagos House of Assembly representing Ikeja, is Tinubu's nephew. He is actually succeeded Mrs. Lola Konde. Five, Shadi Tunumujo, the Yolojo of General of Lagos and Nigeria, is Tunumbu's daughter. Six, her husband, Mr. Oja, was a member, House of Representatives, representing Ekiti State. Seven, Sheyi Tunumbu, one of Tunumbu's children, was appointed as the emergency financial consultant to all parastatas and local governments in Lagos State. His convoy is said to rival that of the state governor, and he has been positioned to take over as governor of Lagos State in 2023, while his father, Bola Metinubu, is unrepentant of his own ambition of becoming the president of Nigeria 2023. 8. Akim Muri Okunola, who recently was imposed as the head of service against all civil service rules, is Tinubu's friend's son. He was Tinubu's personal assistant when he was the governor. 7. 9. Sorry. The incumbent commissioner for establishment, Akinola Bensi, was Tinubu's personal assistant. 10. The incumbent commissioner for health, a three-term commissioner, Jide Idris, is Tinubu's cousin. 11. The incumbent chairman of the Osho, the local government, Bola Ariyo, was also Tinubu's personal assistant. 12. The incumbent commissioner for housing, a two-term commissioner, Bola Wong Lawal, was ADC to Bola Tinubu. 13. Ohando supplies all the fuel being used by the BRT buses in Lagos. And Wale Tinumbu, the CEO of Ohando, is Tinumbu's younger brother. 14. A pseudo company called Alpha Beta collects at lead at least 10% of the revenues accruing to Lagos State, running into hundreds of billions of naira in fees in the 15 years for doing practically nothing. The state still pays the Lagos Inland Revenue Service, LIRS, another 10% as administrative fees to collect some rev same revenue. 
15, the landed property of Lagos State Polytechnic Ikosi Campus was converted into private property for the establishment of a television station, TVC, owned by the same Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The group went on to accuse Tinubu of various corruption-related practices. The statement continued to put it in proper perspective and further drive home our point. An estimated figure of over 7 trillion naira has been lost to corrupt practices on a total expenditure of about 7 trillion by the Lagos State Government in the last 20 years. The financial resource could have been invested in critical infrastructure like the Fourth Mainland Bridge, Lagos International Airport in Egbe, bridges along the Lekki Corridor to eliminate traffic congestion, modern hospitals and schools in all local governments. The APC leader was also accused of vote buying in the events leading up to the presidential and national assembly elections as well as plans to rig the governorship elections through voters intimidation and harassment. At this junction, we would like to emphasize the arrogance and impunity that has become the trademark of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who had claimed to be richer than some states in Nigeria. On the eve of presidential election, viral pictures of uh, went on social media showed two billion vans driving into Tinubu's residence. The Money Laundering Prohibition Act stated that no person or corporate body shall take or accept cash payment of some exceeding 500,000 naira or its equivalent in the case of individuals. While in the case of corporate bodies, the amount is 2 million naira. The transaction is done through financial institution. We therefore call on the relevant authorities to conduct full investigation into these flagrant violations of laws of our land by this individual who now parades himself as unaccountable. In fact, the much touted anti corruption fight of President Buhari will amount to nothing if grave corruption allegations are conveniently ignored. To sustain this vice grip on power, he has retorted to the use of thugs to intimidate and unleash violence on non indigenous residing in Lagos and contributing to the gross domestic product of the state on account of exercising their rights to freely vote for parties and candidates of their choice. This was partly responsible for the low turnout less than 25% of registered voters for the presidential election of February 23rd, 2019. This is a major threat to our democracy which must be nipped in the bud. We therefore call for immediate arrest and prosecution of the corporates and their sponsors. As deterrence to others, unfortunately, the trend of harassment has continued unabated even after the elections of February 23rd. The business activities of the Igbos in Oshodi, Mushin, Lagos Island and other areas are being disrupted ahead of the gubernatorial elections scheduled for March 9, 2019. The activities of these men are the types that have caused genocide in different parts of the world. They must be called to order before they cause major conflagration between the various ethnic groups who have lived peacefully together in Lagos for centuries. We therefore call the attention of the federal government and international community, especially in the International Criminal Court, to the dangerous pre genocidal activities of agents of the former governor of Lagos State, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, his chief thug, Mr. MC Oluomo, and his army of thugs against fellow Nigerians from the southeast and south south living in Lagos. For the record, our movement is not political, it is not about selfish ambitions, it transcends gender, tribalism, or religion. With members spread across all the local government and local council development areas in Lagos, where, where we have coordinators, we have also set up high powered legal support committee made up of eminent lawyers who will provide necessary service to members of our movement during the course of this struggle. We remain resolute in our quest for justice, equity, fairness, and free Lagos, where opportunities equally available to all. With demand for an egalitarian Lagos with the highest ideals of democracy, economic prosperity, modernization, wealth, and freedom, we also demand for the protection of voters from harassment and violence before, during, and after elections. So guys, that is what it is. It is very clear. It is open for us all to see what is really happening in Lagos. And that is the truth from what has been brought out there. Lagos has now become a one-man show where a governor can be kicked out all because someone is at the end of affair and thinks he has entrenched himself um, as the godfather of everything in Lagos. That is what it is for now. If you are not a member of this channel, simply support by tapping on the subscription and the red notification icon bell. This will automatically make you a member of this channel. Thanks for stopping by.